Hello everyone, welcome to the Big 3-0, the 30th episode of our English campaign. Before we begin here though, I just want to throw some information at you. Uh, if you don't already know, there has been a recent uh, development slash breakthrough in the modding community of both Rome Total War, the original, as well as Medieval 2 here. What it is, is um, two modders slash mod teams have come to the same conclusion right around the same time, This the same innovation. And what they're doing is they're coding a custom launcher that will launch the game and will modify that game within the memory of your computer. Uh, what this means is that A, it's legal and it's okayed by the Creative Assembly because you are not directly modifying the executable, uh, the original executable, and you are not, you know, distributing that modified executable because you're not even modifying it truthfully to begin with, which is quite interesting. And B, what this means as well is that uh, they can inject code into the game that can uh, work around the hard codes of the engines of both the games. Uh, for example, there is a limit on factions, regions, and uh, unique units that are in the game. So, this meant that when modders made a mod, for example, Stainless Steel here, they had to, you know, pick and choose, uh, you know, really think hard about which factions, which cities, which units made it into the game, because it's all limited. So what this potentially means, uh, as told by the modders, is that uh, we can now have as many factions, as many regions, as many units as possible, and that's just scratching the surface. So now that... Uh, a good example of this is that, you know, how there's the the general rebels in the game here as one faction all over the map. This now means that we can have one region factions uh, that can be taken over. They'll have unique units, all that shit. Uh, just as in Rome 2, which is quite interesting. Uh, could potentially be a new golden age in the modding of these two old games. Uh, but anyway... If you haven't read the threads already, I heavily suggest you do if you're interested in Medieval 2 mods, uh, Rome, mods like Rome Total Realism. It's a good read. Uh, it's very interesting. Uh, those links are below, so take a look. Now, moving on uh, to our own shit here. We've got uh, a Woodsman Guild available in Angers. We're going to decline. I do not want a Woodsman Guild in Angers. I want something a little better. Also, Pope... Uh, Eugenius here the second he has died which means we're going to have a papal election and uh, we're gonna find out who is going to be oh my god we can actually vote for Jacob the no never mind um, oh hold on no no we were no we were nowhere near being elected uh, actually this Danish Christian the missionary, that's rather fitting. His name is Christian, the missionary. Uh, he, he's been crowned the, the Pope. Pope Lucius XII of the Kingdom of Denmark. Um, but anyway, I guess uh, he's going to be our new our new Pope friend. And actually, he is quite pleased with us. Um, this might mean that Genoa is no longer excommunicated, though. I think that's what that means. Um... That's not suspicious at all, either. I wonder how many Genoese assassins are sitting around uh, Rome itself. Very odd. Um, also, there's a scientific breakthrough, which is, you know, fairly fitting. A modding breakthrough, a scientific breakthrough. Some people would say the Pope dying is a scientific breakthrough in itself. Um, that That's a bit rude, though. But anyway, it, it has been discovered that an ore from the Asia Minor region of Magnesia that attracts iron can also make a piece of metal that orientates itself to point to the north. As reliably as a devout Muslim would turn to face Mecca. Wow, okay, so apparently we have discovered magnetism, and as such, we can now invent the compass, which is uh, great. That's That that fucking takes the guesswork out of exploration, apparently. Um, Leonard de Morley is now a cardinal in the uh, College of Cardinals. So we've got Jacob the Missionary, who is way the fuck up there. He's a Bishop Preferati. I don't know how that happened. And also, we've got Leonard de Morley. Yes, I fine. don't know where he's from. Um, he's from Winchester. He is the Bishop of Winchester. That is very interesting. We are starting to get into the Cardinal game. Uh, one day, we may have an English Pope, which would be very interesting indeed. Um, the following... F what? The Quaresmians are now allied... 
Oh, never mind. The Crusader states are actually a client state of the Quaresmians. And yes, of course, the Republic of Genoa is no longer excommunicated. Well, that's an interesting development, uh, for sure. Uh, it seems the, uh, the Crusaders have kind of fallen under the wing of some Eastern bastards here. Uh, oh well. Um, I did recruit a few spies in Cain, Ren, and Angers. Just to replenish those spies that got quite unmercilessly slaughtered last episode. So we've got Nicholas Bridges here, who's going to head towards uh, I am spent. Clermont. I've already forgotten what it is. It's Clermont. Uh, we've also got two spies in Ren Humphrey of Westmoreland and Edward de Camoys. Doesn't really matter. We're going to forget who the fuck they are any minute now because we've just got so many spies. Iliai Par here. Should keep an eye on Paris. And I suppose we should actually declare war on France any fucking time now. Considering Simmond Russell is already on his way to Paris. It's uh, inevitable, really, that we declare war. Uh, but London now has a university. And I think we'll have to build something economical. I can see that the population growth of London, however, is stalling. So I'm going to build some farms like so. York has better farms in London already. And actually, I think it has eclipsed London in income, which is, uh, that's just great for York. Great fucking job, York. Now, we will have to build, probably, I'll build a city watch in York, actually. But, uh, we'll build quite a lot of economic buildings in York and London in the coming years. And we could probably build an inn in Exeter. Exeter and Winchester are kind of lagging behind. They are not doing the hottest. And I suppose I should build... Some farms in Winchester just to help them along. They are quite behind. Uh, very small towns. Uh, well, it says it's a large town, but in reality, it's it's quite small. Now, Angers has upgraded to a fortress, which means we can recruit uh, Malays, Petites, and Feudal Knights here as well. And um, I'm going to build some roads straight off. Oh, what the heck? Huh. I was not aware we could build those but uh, there we go we've got a chain of river ports we'll build that eventually but first of all we're gonna build some paved roads just to speed our units along and uh, improve trade for Ren and just basically reinforce our infrastructure over here and then we can build some barracks and archery ranges and whatnot I think a chain of river ports would be a good idea eventually though um, uh, Visby now has a church as well there's not a lot going on in Visby. I'm not sure how they feel about our rule yet. Uh, I'm going to disband one unit of mercenaries. We'll see how that goes. Oh, not bad. Not bad at all. We're at 130%. I'll disband another. And uh, look at that. We're 125. I could probably disband all of these mercenaries without pissing everyone off. There we go. 115%. That's quite, that's quite good for Visby. We could probably do normal... Mm, that's kind of pushing it actually <laughs> but we'll build an inn and that will appease everyone and then uh, I guess that's that's it for Visby really um, there's not much to build in in general a blacksmith is kind of useless over here uh, but we'll build farms after that and then we'll leave these for uh, I don't know a later date all right we've got a new family family member rather it's Samuel Russell Owen Vaughn has come of age and he is a promising commander Wow the Vaughns are just coming out in droves here. I think that's two or three Vaughns now. We've got uh, Lawrence Vaughn and Owen Vaughn. Where's this fella at? He's in London and we'll have to give him a castle. I don't know who is the Lord of Nottingham at the moment. Possibly no one or even Carnarvon. Oh, here we go. It's actually Archibald of Warwick. I forgot. Uh, but we'll, we'll gift yes. Nottingham to Owen Vaughn. I think the other Vaughn is in Edinburgh. No, it's Robin of Shrewsbury, my mistake. Lawrence Vaughn is in hey, York, that's a, that's right. All right, so we've got another general in Nottingham who can begin some schooling, I believe. Yes, Let's no, see. Sire. He should have a little... Oh, he's militarily minded, but he can now be trained slash schooled in uh, the military matters in Nottingham. So we'll leave him there for a couple seasons, and then we can send him forth uh, upon our enemies, you know, whenever. Whenever we can. We are now sixth. In military apparently but uh, number one in financial and we're rising through the ranks everywhere else it's looking good for England for sure now I believe David of Salisbury is still on his way back we could have him land in Holy Roman lands I believe I'm not sure if we have military access 
with the Holy Romans. I mean, we are, of course, allies, but I'm, I, I can't quite remember if that means we are immediately, you know, we immediately have military access. But anyway, we've got a few spies around, and uh, we're just going to shuffle them around, get some intel here. Dijon seems kind of weak. It's only got a few units. Guiano has moved into Dijon. I don't know who this is. Giacomo. Giacomo, rather. That's that's the name there. Uh, my lord. Who the hell is this? Randolph Fitzherbert is going to mo move towards my side here. And there's quite a lot of armies here now. We've got De Vittorio here. And they've got Genoese crossbowmen and Sudanese javelinmen, which seem uh, to be... I think these are mercenaries, perhaps, actually. But they've got Genoese crossbowmen, which are... Uh, very strong indeed. So we'll have to watch out for them as we move westward, uh, rather eastward. But uh, now we need to move a few units around here because uh, we've got good old Malatesta here to face Barty Carr, who is currently retraining a few units in Toulouse. But we're going to reform that army with these few units, and then we can take uh, Malatesta on eventually. So I think I can uh, combine these units here, like so. And yes. then I will plop, there we go, that uh, malaise pedates in there. I'm going to leave yes, one no, unit sorry. of malaise behind in Toulouse itself. And there we go. We've got an army to defeat Malatesta. Who is this? Oh, okay. We've got a few more units that can head to Toulouse. And they are very displeased, actually. Toulouse is not happy at all. But uh, there we go. Barty Carr is all set. Simmond Russell is set. We just need to declare war now. And um, let's just take... Oh, we've, we've only got militia units in Angers at the moment, unfortunately. Uh, I'm going to send this last archer unit with Simmond Russell. And I think we have... Well, I, I don't know. That was kind of useless. I would have given that uh, these militia units rather. But I was not thinking. But our spies are all spent. They cannot move. Can we train anything in Nottingham, perhaps? No, there's nothing of import. Uh, we can retrain good old Owen, though, and we shall do so. Carnarvon, perhaps? Can we? No, we can't train anything. All right. You know, we are pretty pretty good for armies at the moment. We just need to move them. Yes, no, so I think sir. I'm going to declare war will, next sir, turn uh, by engage. marching directly on Paris, which is quite the fucking opening move, I got to tell you. They're not going to appreciate that. Uh, okay, now in the south here, we're going to get Barty Carr to take on Malatesta. And as far as our next move in the south here, there's quite an army in Marseille, so we're probably just going to keep it uh, keep it quiet in Toulouse for a while, just to see where Genoa is focusing their power. If they're uh, gearing up for a battle here, we can just meet them in the, uh, the coast of France here. But uh, as I had said earlier as well, we can always head towards Clermont and take that. Just to consolidate our lands. I could always bring Owen Vaughn over as well to lead an army from Angers. But uh, David of Salisbury is going to be in the continent of Europe very, very shortly. Um, so uh, yeah, we'll have to figure it out within the next few turns. But for now, we'll get Barty Carr to take on Malatesta. Here is his army. Quite a lot of mercenary units um, I'm not sure if Breton Light Cavalry if they are mercenaries or not but I'm going to assume they are other than that it's just spearmen sergeants and a catapult which is nothing we can't handle uh, so I'll see you on the battle map Muster your courage, men. We march into battle. all right here is our deployment uh, basically the deployment I've used before the only difference is now we have Malay's Petites who look very similar to our Normans. That guy is mooning the f fucking Genoese like there's no tomorrow. Okay, these guys look very similar to our Norman sergeants, uh, which begs the question, why are they more expensive than these guys? I don't know. Uh, also, we have some feudal knights on our left flank here who look very similar to our general's bodyguard. So uh, just, you know, twice the size uh, in, you, you know, twice the unit size. But anyway... We're going to start the battle here. Uh, right away, we're going to try to take out that enemy catapult. And I want my catapult, rather, to be uh, able to fire at will. We'll move everything else up a little bit. Nah, actually, you know what? We'll, we'll wait for them to come to us. We have the missile advantage here. 
as well as the cavalry advantage. So there's not, you know, a huge rush. I'm going to move my malaise on the right flank uh, even further to the flank, though. Now, uh, all of my archers, I'm going to assume, they're, they're firing at this Breton Lake cavalry, which is really not going well for them. They're losing man after man. Uh, I've put my crossbowmen to the uh, one flank, which is quite different than uh, how I've usually been using. Look at this rain of arrows. Wow. Uh, this is different than, you know, how I've usually been using them. Uh, I usually put them in the front line, but you, they can only ever get off one or two volleys before they have to retreat. So I'm going to see how this goes. Uh, we've got the thin blue fucking line here. Uh, well, I guess it's actually a thin red line of weakened... Sar oh, my word. Uh, that catapult is wrecking my day. Okay. Our sergeants, unfortunately, are a little weak at the moment. Um, so we're going to have to be very wary of that, and we'll have to be forthright with our uh, heavy infantry on either flank. We don't want to get those uh, spearmen absolutely wrecked. I'm going to send my unit of malaise after these catapults, whilst Barty Carr and uh, my feudal knights here take out these mace men. They're sending their light men at arms after my malaise, who can take them out quite easily as well. I'm going to move my flanks forward, like so. There's no fucking hope for these guys, anyway. Oh, here we go. Here's Genoa's general as well, Malatesta. Uh, so once we take out uh, either of these units, we'll charge them right the fuck now. These light men at arms are already annihilated, so I'm going to charge Malatesta like there's no tomorrow. Um... Our archers are already fucking running away. I'm just going to get them to stop. And, you know, they're basically done for the battle. And my catapults as well are going to have to stop. But here we... Oh, no. Malatesta has actually charged my fucking malaise in the rear. And uh, they're not pleased at all. Okay. Uh, we've got Barty Carr and our feudal knights. Who can uh, probably get another charge off on these macemen once they get into position. I'm just uh, charging near the rear of these Spearman Sergeants with my Light Men at Arms right now. I'm going to get my Malays Petites working on those Mace Men. And then uh, this last unit here will charge. Oh my shit. Those crossbows are fucking wrecking everything. Uh, a million kills. KDR off the fucking charts. Uh, okay. Barty Car, my Feudal Knights. Not doing much. I think we are basically going to try to chase down Malatesta before we uh, do anything else. All my malays can uh, line up right here, like so. And they will, of course, charge into the rears of all the units they can get their dirty paws on. Oh, Malatesta is charging headlong into the rear of my light men at arms. And that charge killed at least five men alone. Uh, that's rather shitty, but uh, this is basically the end of Malatesta right here. He's pinned. There he goes. Uh, rest in pieces, you fucking son of a bitch. Uh... There goes Malatesta. Uh, right. I guess basically this is the end of the battle. There's no more units left. Oh, right, my mistake. The catapult is the only unit remaining. So we'll charge them and uh, put an end to this ridiculous battle. Who are you? Fine. Charge that unit. Okay. There we go. They have broken. I'm not going to bother to chase down uh, prisoners, so I'm just going to end it here. There we go. A clear victory. We only lost 100 men there. The Battle of Gascony. I'm not sure how that's pronounced right now, but uh, someone let me know. There we go. All right. I'm just going to try to ransom these guys. and uh, For some reason, they've accepted. I'm not sure. There we go. Uh, Captain Corso. Uh, those are the only units left. Uh, but we'll put... Barty Carr back in Toulouse for now. And I will probably merge these units into our units, but uh, I'll do that off camera. <laughs> I'm going to end the turn right now. All right, look at this. <laughs> I did not want that Woodcutter's Guild for hopes of a better guild. And uh, Horse Breeders, that's, that's a good one. That will definitely uh, be a boon to our cavalry in Angers. So there we go. And also, look at this. Owen Vaughn was found innocent at trial. He's barely out of diapers, and already the, the, the fucking Pope is trying to inquisit him. Like, he, come on, he's a child. What could he possibly have done? Uh, also, we've got some troubadours, and we'll, of course, accept. I'm not sure what that does, but look at that. We've got, we're a thousand doubloons. 
uh, poorer because of it. Uh, Blanche the Affectionate has actually kicked the bucket finally. Uh, she was a million years old, and by a million I mean she was actually probably close to 70. There she is. Died peacefully, 1183. But she was mar married to Ambrose Marshall. If you can remember Ambrose Marshall, that was his wife, who died nearly 30 years after he did. Yowzers, she uh, she was literally 80 years old. But anyway, uh, we're apparently on good terms with the Kingdom of Aragon for some odd reason. And shit, we are kicking the shit out of the Cardinal... Sorry, the College of Cardinals now. We've got three. Three fucking bishops slash cardinals in this fucking place. I am so stoked we can actually be in control of the uh, Papal See at one point. Or at some point, I should say. So, uh, the Kingdom of Denmark has declared a truce with the Holy Romans, and for some reason the Fatimids have actually declared war on us. Even though they were so fucking stoked about our peace agreement, they, uh, it's just, uh, not, not good enough, I guess. Uh, it, the, uh, the relation has, the relationship, rather, has grown a little God's stale, I guess. Stale. But we now have a bishop in, uh, the Middle East here, so I'm going to actually Leaving place him outside Acre, and then, at some point, you know, he can start, uh, I don't know, converting the Muslims. And if it gets, you know, good enough, we may... I, I may consider bribing it again. Uh, we don't need these units, so I'm going to disband them. There we go. We are now a few hundred gold pieces richer every turn. Uh, in Jean, sorry, in Angers, we've got some Malays, Petites, and some Feudal Knights, which I'm sure would be useful to uh, Simmond Russell, actually. So I'm going to uh, give those units to him. I'll take those archers and give him these. Uh, Simmond Russell, unfortunately, that uh, kind of limits his movement this turn. So we'll have to wait another turn to attack uh, France. They should know by now that we are coming to fuck them up. We've got an entire fucking stack on the border. Uh, they should they should see this coming for certain. Now, in Ram here. It's just the seat of French power, apparently. They are trying to capture Antwerp, po possibly. No, there's a lot of action going up here, though. The Scots are holding on to Bruges as if it was their firstborn. Holy moly. Uh, let's see what else we can see. Are there any units in Clermont at all? There we go. Yes, there are three units, but there's no general there, so that makes that easy. What about Paris? Approaching quietly. We got Colin Capet. Very interesting. Uh, we've actually got a familiar family name for once. And here we go. We're going to get another spy down here. I've got so many spies, I don't know what the hell to do with them. Uh, Alright, so we've got Barty Carr in Toulouse. He's resting up for a few turns here as I retrain some units. And uh, once I'm... Oh, shit. I need to retrain this unit. Stat. Double fucking stat. Uh... Once I'm done there, we can probably... I'm thinking we can march on Clermont, and then we'll take it and head south yet again. And somewhere in the middle, you know, we'll bring Simon Russell. He'll go through Paris and Rome. Uh, Rome, I should say. And then we'll head to Dijon and Lyon and then Marseille, of course. And uh, that's basically the plan, I guess. We'll, we'll take Barty Carr to north towards Clermont. And then back south again to Marseille. And then we'll do a nice pincer move with Simon Russell. And perhaps David of Salisbury if he gets here in time. He's got a few years yet. Uh, but anyway. Uh, what was I doing? This. Carnarvon now has communal farms. And I'm not sure what they can use next. Carnarvon can probably use a chapel actually. Wren has a school. And they'll have a city watch. Uh, Galway, as I've been told it is, is building some mines. Perfect. Edinburgh has a library, and we'll build a school to match that. Bordeaux has a barracks, and I feel like a tourney field would be a good addition, considering Bordeaux has a Master Horse Breeders Guild already. That would just, you know, stack that bonus. We could build knight stables, but they're kind of useless at the moment. Perhaps an armor would be a good move. Let's see. Uh, no, archers are not... Oh, I can't actually tell at the moment. I think I'll build an armor, actually. We'll go from there. Toulouse, of course, just built a logging camp. It's always a logging camp. Um, we're doing alright for public order. So I think we may build uh, 
siege works. Holy shit, we're going to build some siege works. It's going to take seven turns and 6,000 florins. But uh, I definitely want a fucking trebuchet. I want a trebuchet like yesterday, all right? So we're going to build some siege works for the coming siege of Marseille. I believe that's going to be a hard-fought battle. Marseille has, well, it's just a regular stone wall, actually. It's not like a massive fucking giant stone wall. But we'll definitely need a trebuchet for Lyon. And uh, it appears that... The Genoese have... Oh no, it's still a fortress. Bern is still a fortress, even though it appears to be a city on the map. Very odd indeed. Now, let's see if we have military access. Is that something? Uh, okay. We'll offer slash demand military access, as well as map information. Um, just reject it. Alright. Let's make another offer. Let's make them an, an offer they cannot refuse. Let's give them, I don't know, 500 florins. Uh, is that enough? Do you think... No, man, I really want that military access, though. I'm, I'm going to have to go all out for this. Um, whoops, wrong one. Make a single payment. Here we go. A couple hundred more florins, like, I don't know, 1,200. Maybe that'll do it. What the fuck? Do you, what the hell do you want from me? Oh, donkey, donkey for your time, yeah. Donkey my ass. Okay. I think that's basically all we can do this turn. Uh, Barty Carr is not moving. Simmons Russell is not moving. David of Salisbury is well on his way. Here we go. Uh, via Admiral Richard. Although we have been blockaded in Cain, so we'll have to break that blockade. Good old Admiral Philip, I believe, will take care of it. Here we go. Blam. So we sunk one of their ships. No problem. We broke that blockade. And uh, now the Fatimids hate us even more, which uh, I could not give a single fuck less apparently but anyway we've also got uh, oh shit the Genoese are hot on our tail here so we're gonna drop off Robin Fitzwalter and head north hopefully oh my word apparently it's only 16% for this uh, assassination but we're gonna try it anyway Galway is not doing fantastic religion wise they've only got 51 percent it's kind of hovering around 51 50. maybe if i build a chapel instead of a mine that may help uh, i think i only have a few more turns for this well 12 turns is quite a lot actually we have 12 turns to convert the people of connacht oh my god there's a giant swamp here i never noticed that there's a swamp right outside galway that that just reinforces the idea that galway is actually the Asshole of the universe. Uh, just a swampy piece of shit. Okay. <laughs> I think uh, everything is going well. We we can retrain... Well, train a few more units here. And then uh, at some point, I believe... What? Baron stables? Oh, never mind. That's not what I thought it was. We do have knight stables, though. That's a thing. We'll build an archery range uh, after this armor. Why not? All right, folks. Like I said, uh, we're not going to be doing much... Uh, the rest of this episode, so I shall call it quits here. Next episode, we'll advance on France <laughs> and get them fucking rip-roaring mad at us, and it'll be a good time. I hope you will join me. I'll see you then.